Windows 11 week is officially upon us. It has a full public official release, isn't just the insider builds anymore. And we're going to release quite a few videos showing you how to get upgraded, the things you need to take into consideration with the new installation, how to personalize it, and all of that. And we're starting out specifically for streamers, talking about whether you should upgrade or not, and the things that you should do after upgrading and before upgrading to make sure you get the smoothest experience for your streaming rig or gaming rig or what have you. I'm Meeples Vox, the stream professor, and... About six years ago now, I made a full tutorial series on getting started with Windows 10, and now we're tackling Windows 11, and I have tons of videos for getting up and running with your computer or with live streaming, so hit the subscribe and notification buttons so you can stay informed. First and foremost, before you upgrade, back up everything. I know you're probably tired of hearing this, but specifically, we're going to talk about backing up your OBS scenes and profiles because that's what streamers are going to be caring about the most. But you should be backing up all of your files, even if you're doing the upgrade in place. Things can always go wrong. There's always a risk of losing files or something messing up to the point that you have to reinstall. Having a backup will always save you a ton of trouble. Specifically for OBS, if you want to back up your scenes and your profiles and all of that, Open OBS, click Profile and the menu, and then choose your profile from the list. And from there, you can go to Profile, Export, and that will create a folder with all the different information files for your specific profile that you can then import into a new instance of OBS should you need to reinstall it Windows from scratch. Same thing with Scene Collections. Navigate to your Scene Collection from the menu and then choose Export. And this will actually create a .json file with all the information to re-import your Scene Collection to a new install of OBS. If you want to do this a little bit easier or you have a bunch of profiles and don't want to do it one but one by one, open Explorer, Windows key E if you want, type in the URL bar or the path bar, percent app data percent, and that will take you to the roaming folder. Choose OBS Studio and go to basic and then you have two folders, profiles and scenes. Just copy these to an external drive, a network storage, your Dropbox, whatever, and that will contain all of your profiles and scene collections for your installed version of OBS Studio. Really handy. Next is to take note of all the programs you have installed. Just get, you know, pen and paper, make a list, as well as any specific settings that you find important to preserve or set back up on a new installation of Windows if, again, you need to reinstall from scratch. Lastly, consider what you actually want to upgrade. Uh, for, for instance, your streaming PC, you may want to be super reliable and you already have it configured the way you want it to go and don't want to run any issues of having downtime because you upgraded and something went wrong or what have you. But your gaming PC, you might actually want to consider upgrading. This is assuming you're on a two PC setup. If you're not, then you really have a tough choice to make. Uh, but specifically for gaming PCs, many users have reported higher performance in certain games, including Warzone, due to some of the optimizations behind the scenes and things like that in Windows 11. And so if you have multiple computers, you may just want to upgrade your gaming PC and not your work PC, your streaming PC, your work laptop or whatever. Or you may not want to touch any of your main rigs and just have a spare laptop or family PC or something that you upgrade to just kind of experiment with and go from there. Now, after you have upgraded to Windows 11, there are a few things that you will need to do. I will have a short link in the video description that I'm uploading with how to get upgraded if you're not familiar or it hasn't distributed it to you. Uh, but once you're upgraded, first and foremost, you need to check for driver updates, especially your graphics cards and capture cards. Go to the specific websites if you have capture cards or webcams and navigate to their support driver settings. For example, Elgato just has their drivers released and make sure you're on the latest versions. For graphics card drivers, you can just search for NVIDIA or AMD graphics card drivers and find your specific one. Most of the, both companies will provide an auto updater tool for you. And if you're on NVIDIA and I believe AMD's Catalyst Control or whatever their new software is, will do this as well. But if you have the GeForce Experience software installed, it will automatically download and install the latest drivers for you. Now. If you have additional devices that you may need updated drivers for, those can actually be distributed through Windows Update through the optional updates section, which we cover a bit more in the 10 things you need to do in a new install of OBS video, which will be linked below whenever it's up. There will be a whole playlist link below of all these videos. I'm kind of making them at once so you can go through them at your own leisure once they're all published and stuff. Next, you need to check your power settings. These may have been reset during the update, and if, you, if it puts you on something like Power Saver or Balanced or something, you're leaving performance on the table, assuming you're on a desktop. If you're on a laptop, you may need to make sure that it's on those modes. So you can go to Start Settings Power to actually just browse the general power settings, like when it puts your computer to sleep, when it turns off your displays, and yada yada. But to get to the actual power plans, those are still hidden in the old Windows 7 control panel, so you have to start search, type in Power Plan, 
uh, and then pull up that menu. And I just run with the ultimate performance mode on all of my desktop and game streaming PCs because that's the way to go. Uh, but again, depending on if you're on a laptop or something like that, you may want one of the lower power options. Next up, you will want to check your audio settings because more than likely your default audio devices and all of that have been reset. You may even find that your microphone was set to a different frequency than you had before. And all of this is in a new user interface within Windows 11. So you go to settings, system, sound, or if you right click the little audio settings section of your system tray, you can get to the sound settings from there. Uh, and from there, you can choose your default input and output devices or even pair a Bluetooth one, which is a pretty cool little option. You've got volume sliders. You can set your output audio to be mono for some reason. If you have like a Bluetooth speaker or something, kind of a neat setting. Uh, and then same thing for microphones. And then you can actually view your settings for individual devices. And so this is a new updated menu that will give you the frequencies, the, 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 the usual settings you found in the old sound control panel. Uh, but that's also available under more sound settings that will take you to the old sound panel if you're looking for it. If you click volume mixer, this actually takes you to the IO routing tool setup uh, so that you can assign specific programs to specific input or output devices. If you have a GoXLR or a Beacon Mix or any other number of mixers that have multiple output devices, you can actually assign individual microphones or output devices to your programs here, as well as adjust the individual volume settings for specific programs. So you'll want to make sure that you know where this is. This is also accessible by right clicking in the taskbar or system tray and going to volume mixer as well. There's also a reset button. So if you set all these or don't like what you've done or you got confused and messed it up, you can just reset it back to defaults and then start over from scratch, which is pretty cool. Next up is Focus Assist. Focus Assist is basically control over notifications and alerts to make sure it's not spamming you when you're streaming or gaming or working or whatever. This is especially important if you're doing PC game streaming because those can show up on your stream and you, they may contain personal information or not be something you want, whatever. So if you click the date and time, you can then go to choose Focus Assist settings and the good option is just to go with uh, alarms only, which won't show any app notifications or anything like that. Or you can set it up manually to have, or set it up automatically rather, to have specific active hours, uh, such as when you usually stream. You can set it up for like an hour before and an hour after so that it just automatically disables all of this when you're streaming and never shows up. You can also have it to just detect and never show notifications when you're gaming as well or doing other full screen things. Pretty awesome. Next up is to open OBS. Make sure your profiles and scene collections are intact. If not, import the backups that we made before. Uh, and then you will want to check on your default audio devices, which most likely got reset. So you want to go and set those back as they were supposed to be, as well as check on your video capture devices. So if you have any scenes with capture cards, webcams, whatever, those may have become deactivated or unlinked from the specific devices. So you just kind of have to navigate and find those devices again in your list and make sure all your scenes and things like that are working, especially before you start trying to stream. Next up is a discussion about the new hardware accelerated graphics scheduler setting uh, that was introduced a few Windows updates ago for Windows 10, but is kind of the default in Windows 11 now. There, This is a balance that you have to strike between do you want to run OBS as administrator to get that render lag fix, or do you want the new, what, the, what we call HAGS fix, which can also do the same thing. Now on my main desktops, I have found that Hags did not actually make a big enough difference. This is on Windows 10, by the way. And I still got render lag in games like Apex Legends, and I needed to run OBS as administrator regardless, so I just disabled Hags and ran OBS as admin to get the best performance. However, when I was reviewing the MSI Raider GE76 laptop here, I was only using Hags and not running OBS as administrator, and I had no render lag, this, lag issues. And I think that's going to continue to improve and be the case with Windows 11. So I would honestly test it for yourself. And you may find that you don't need to run OBS as admin anymore with this new Windows version and the new HAG setting. And that may be the way to go. But I would do some A-B testing and find out for yourself because you kind of want this locked in before you start streaming again. And again, if you're on a dual PC stream, then that doesn't really apply anyway because your OBS is running on a separate computer, but worth noting. 
Next up, you want to check on your startup programs. You can either right click or you can't right click the taskbar anymore. You can either go to control alt delete and then task manager more details startup or you can go to settings app startup and clean up any apps that are running by default whenever Windows boots up that you don't want to or any that, that got disabled that you do want to get this cleaned up so that your computer's not launching with a bunch of bloat whenever you start it up, which is going to impede your streams. Getting a bunch of videos out like this for a specific, you know, launch like Windows 11 is a lot of work and I can't publish them all on the same day so you can actually watch them all at once, which I would like to do, but YouTube's notifications and algorithms and stuff don't really allow for that. That's why I've built my own video streaming site with my creator friends that allow me to not have to deal with a lot of that stuff. The site is called Nebula and we've partnered with CuriosityStream. Nebula features YouTube's top education creators such as MKBHD, Thomas Frank, and Lowspec Gamer. My videos are higher quality there, ad-free, and often extended from the YouTube versions and sometimes significantly earlier when I'm doing a bunch of videos at once like this. Curiosity Stream saw what we were doing for educational content and wanted to form an educational documentary power alliance where we worked out a deal with the link in the description below where if you sign up for Curiosity Stream, you get access to their library of thousands of educational and documentary titles, but you also get access to Nebula for free for the entire duration of your subscription to Curiosity Stream. They're also offering a 26% off their annual plan deal, making it less than $15 per year for both Curiosity Stream and Nebula, which is just kind of Bonkers. While you're there, check out Secrets of the Brain to learn about how the brain works and to see a neuroscientist go and study a bunch of unique neurological conditions, which I found really informative and just kind of interesting. Like, we, we focus on education and teaching a lot here, but learning how the brain works is kind of a big meta part of education as well. Head on over to curiositystream.com slash epos for the best deal in streaming and sign up for under $15 per year for both sites. It's crazy. Just do it. Lastly, we're going to tweak update settings so that we don't have any install when we're trying to stream or anything like that because, oh boy, that cannot be fun. So go to start, settings, update, and then you can pause updates. So you can just pause them in depth, you know, for a couple weeks. You can actually extend it by a couple weeks as well if you just want to keep it completely paused and have set like per month or every few week update cycles that you run. Um, you also get manual control over whether it restarts for updates. You can set active hours that you keep it from restarting. So I would cover a window, you know, a couple hours before and a couple hours after you typically stream to get that completely covered and protected. And then you get control over things like whether it downloads updates over data or not. If you have a computer or a Surface device that supports data, uh, you can enable or disable notifications about needing reboots for updates. And then you can do something which is really cool, which is enable delivery optimization. And this will actually download updates from other computers on your network if another computer has it. So theoretically, you only need to download the update once on your network, and then every other computer could theoretically just pull it from that computer, which will go significantly faster in most cases than downloading it over the internet, which will speed up your updates a lot. It's kind of like running your own cache server, uh, which is actually really cool. Uh, but you can disable that if you want as well. And then you can enable updates for Microsoft-specific apps such as Skype or Microsoft Office and things like that. And then lastly, you can check for optional updates, which we mentioned will also cover specific driver updates and things like that. Otherwise, you just need to learn all the new Windows 11 stuff and personalize it to how you want it to run. We have a lot of videos coming on personalization, controlling the new snapping and multiple desktop things, disabling the widgets and all that stuff. They will be linked below as they go live. Otherwise, hit the like button if you enjoyed. Join us on Discord at discord.gg slash And remember, be kind, rewind.